So welcome to the driest desert in the world called Atacama here in Chile. It's gonna be a fun day. Hey everyone, my name is Alex. I'm an ex-medical student who sold all his belongings in 2012 to travel around the world. 50 countries and the adventure continues. So I'm currently here in Chile in South America. If you guys remember, I was in India just last week. I'm back in South America, I picked up the motorcycle and I'm gonna basically just drive through Chile, Peru and Bolivia. And then I don't know what's gonna happen after that. But it's so hard transitioning from going like a blogger and doing press trips and having wonderful hotels and great food and then transitioning into this, which is the motorcycle venture. It's the eating street food. It's the surviving on the road. I realize my body has a, sometimes issues with transitioning so crazy from India time to South America time. And then the physicality of driving a motorcycle. Yeah, it's a really big challenge. Um, yeah, I spent seven days in my hotel room uh, here in Chile readjusting to everything and editing videos for you guys. And I'm actually struggling trying to post videos every other day. I cannot imagine how difficult it is posting videos every day. It's pretty insane. Uh, that's a struggle though, right? You know, one thing people say about my videos, and you can check out the comments, is that they're very cinematic and there's a lot going on. So that's why it takes so long to film and so long to post. Before, it used to take me like six weeks to upload one video. Uh, but I realized that you guys love looking at videos every single day. So that's what I'm trying to do is daily videos. But it's so much work. So I'm just going to keep on doing it. Anyway, I'm going to have lunch here and then I'm going to head off back on the road. Good morning everybody, I am currently in the city of Antofagasta, Chile and as you can see I'm near the ocean because my hair is like super spongy, <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, last night I actually stayed at this hotel over here. I was actually able to park the bike inside that gated area, which was very, very nice. And for about 30 US dollars, I had parking and a hotel to myself. Okay, so I got feedback from you guys of asking me certain questions that you want me to answer during these trips because there's a lot of confusion as to what I do and how I do it. So today I'm going to show you exactly what it is uh, to drive the motorcycle and all the personal struggles and challenges I face every single day of doing a trip like this because it is not easy, it's difficult and the reason most people don't do it is because it's quite a challenge. The first thing today is that it's really hot so what I have to do is my jacket is very cool and actually has these zippers and I have to unzip them so that air can actually flow through it uh, as you can see because otherwise I will overheat. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. There's eight air vents on this jacket. And if I'm really clever, uh, there's actually an armpit one as well. Look at that. So I can actually undo the armpit one a little bit too. 
Anyway, that's the biggest struggle on the motorcycle is I'm always drinking water, which is crazy. I'm always like sweating or I'm cold. It's never comfortable to ride the motorcycle, unfortunately. So you're either hot, you're cold, you're freezing, you're bursting with heat. Uh, yeah, there's no in between, so it's unfortunate. But anyway, that's part of the challenge. Anyway, I'm gonna get on the road and uh, I'm gonna head off to San Pedro de Atacama today, which is about a four hour drive. Here's one thing you guys may not realize is that my right hand is always doing the throttle it's always doing this and it gets really really tired because i'm driving all day long what makes it worse is i'm always editing videos at night so my wrist right now is really inflamed and really hurting because i use the right hand for my mouth all the time and i use my right hand for the throttle all the time it's truly a physical challenge to do this every single day editing videos and traveling like this lucky for me this motorcycle actually has a somewhat okay cruise control which means that if i twist this thing it can actually hold the throttle still look at that so it gives me a little break every now and then however it's not perfect and it's not the best thing because it sometimes overshoots the throttle it's a nice little small break so this hand does so much for me so I got to be very careful on uh, keeping my health good so here's one of the things about the roadside culture in Chile is that all over the highways you're gonna find these things so basically it's almost like a grave uh, I don't know if actually anybody's in there but I don't think so it's just a shrine to remember somebody who passed away and you see these everywhere along the highway here so all over the highway you're gonna see these shrines man it is so hot and barren over here Whew. it's dry I'm already dehydrated rough going so again this is the driest desert in the world and there's even a section here that I'll pass by in the next few hours that has not seen rain in over a hundred and some years that's pretty intense Definitely water. This will save your life. It's always best to have more than you'll need. Driving a motorcycle around the world, I run out of water, and that is not fun. Your muscles stop working, your brain stops functioning the right way. Forget the danger of dehydration, it's that you know you're balancing a very heavy vehicle at the same time. So yeah. Always hydrate. Goodness. All right, so Chile is known for having mines. And if you see that truck in front of me, it's actually going to one of the gold or silver mines that are here. And as you see on my left, you can actually see all the man-made mountains by all the dirt they actually excavate. So this road down the Atacama Desert, as you can see, is very straight and very boring. What I'm doing is I'm actually checking my emails on my phone, as you can see here. And I'm uh, listening to music, as you can see there and reply to my Instagram comments. <laughs> so if you guys wonder how I have the time to do this is that sometimes I go on the road and uh, I just basically go to my Instagram and I reply to all your comments. And there's today's picture. Look at that, that's me. You're on your road all the time on the motorcycle. This is the stuff you have to do. Otherwise you never have time to do it. So I got a question on YouTube from somebody saying, do I listen to music when I travel and I drive on the motorcycle? The answer is yes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It all depends what I'm doing, if I feel like it, and I don't want to be blasting music for 12 hours a day. They do one of two things, actually. I have these headphones, they're like little earbuds, and I use those, which work fantastic. I even use these as like earplugs sometimes, just to cut the wind noise off. The other thing I've been doing recently in the last few days, which I've never done before until now, is I've been actually putting earplugs in my ears, and then I turn on, and then I turn on my Bluetooth on my helmet. Check it out. Those earplugs, I actually connected to my Bluetooth on my helmet. And this thing actually has speakers inside, so they run all the way through the helmet and on the sides. And what that does is it prevents the music from being too loud for my ears, and uh, I can still hear the music. It's, it's not the best quality, but you know, it kind of keeps me going. Basically, I do that because I don't want the sound to damage my ears, uh, because the helmet and the wind is already loud enough. So when you want to hear music, you have to play it really, really, really loud to hear it. Uh, which I don't recommend you do, and I don't do it. I'd rather not listen to music and preserve my hearing for the rest of my life uh, than listen to music. So obviously I can't listen to like classical music that I like. I have to listen to like stuff that's a lot louder uh, because that's the only things you actually get to hear uh, on the helmet. Anyway, those are my little tips and tricks of uh, what I do when I drive and I listen to music. Back on the road we go. The machinery. Yeah, look at that, flat tire. That was a 
very long ride. So I'm here at this uh, supermarket and uh, I'm gonna stock up on water, I'm gonna stock up on food, and I'm gonna stock up on some mechanical stuff that I need. From here on out, I'm gonna do that very same route through Bolivia. It takes three to four days with no gas, no water, no food. It's much cheaper to buy here than it is a smaller town that I'll be passing through before I cross back into Bolivia. I'm gonna go do some shopping. <laughs> Finished packing the bike. I got my food for the road. I have all my extra containers so I can put gas in there. I got a whole big one dedicated for water. I just got some motorcycle oil from here. Uh, so yeah, I gotta hit the Bolivian Altiplano once again. Why? I don't know. It's on, It's literally on my way, so why not, right? So if you guys saw the previous videos, I did a route to the west. I'm gonna do a route to the east this time, and hopefully it'll show me some uh, a few different things. Look at my hair. Look how crazy my hair is today. That is nuts, look at that. <laughs> driving and I saw like a lot of people and I decided to stop and apparently it's an outlook. Valley of the moon and the valley of Mars. And I guess it kind of looks like the planets, doesn't it? It's official. There are way too many people here. Literally, you, you, you can't even take a nice picture. There's just, any, there's just everybody behind you. Look at all the people. Look at that. Right Look at that. So many. And this is the example of a way too touristic place. Traffic here. I picked the worst spot for a little interview, huh? <laughs> uh, 